the uh, big news today seems to be that Macron, in an epic backpedal, has decided to withdraw his ambassadors from Niger. With immediate effect, they've been recalled to Paris right away. And that he will withdraw uh, troops from Niger uh, by the end of the year. Now, this on the surface looks brilliant and I'm very pleased for Niger. Um, I think that this goes a long way in actually supporting the military junta in being able to do their job and reclaim the stolen resources of Niger, the mines, the airfields and whatnot. I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how this will impact the uh, Americans that are also occupying Niger. They have a military base there, of course. They've got one everywhere. <laughs> um, the only countries that don't have one American military base are the ones that have two. Anyway, I, I'm very interested to see what they will do. And uh, because of, from what I can gather from Nigerian and um, Nigerian friends, they are only not being attacked because they want to deal with the French first. The French have a massive military advantage over America in Africa. And, uh, and the, the Americans will, I'm sure, be wanting to bed down in Niger, but I don't think that they're going to be successful. I think the Nigerians have shown remarkable resilience to uh, the situation. However, this worries me a bit. Troops withdrawing from Niger by the end of the year. And the reason for that is because if you look at what happened in Mali, you know, they, they made these deals that they would withdraw the French Foreign Legion, but that they would have to have UN peacekeepers. And according to the people of Mali, often this was just people putting a different uniform on, the same, same people. And you have to remember that after, you know, 650 years of uh, illegal occupation of these countries, um, there are a lot of members of the French Foreign Legion who aren't French, uh, it's essentially a, 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 a private military mercenary group um, funded by the French EU taxpayer, but also that there are people who you know, have generational families there. They've, they've lived in Niger or in Chad or wherever for many generations, and so they're very reluctant to leave what they consider to be theirs behind and go back to Africa and this is again the issue with colonization across the world when you when when you when you go and you have this colonial out, out, outlook it causes trouble indefinitely um, but what I fear and what I predict and again this is just my opinion is that um, what will happen is these French Foreign Legion troops will find their way into other countries in the Seychelles and, and, and more succinctly into Chad. Um, Chad is still heavily influenced by France. It's, it, it, almost everyone has a gun as well, so it's incredibly tense there. And if there, uh, or I would say when there is set to be a coup in Chad to get rid of these uh, imposters, that it will be an Im incredibly bloody one and uh, and I think that's of huge concern I mean not just for the people of Chad but also for who may well be looking to broker peace the Russians the Chinese and in fact the the, the military of Chad themselves um, so my prediction again based upon conversations with African men who I know very well and who have been kind enough to share their information with me um, is that um, is that this is going to move now to Chad and that that will be the next the next step of this war which which fundamentally is a battle using Africa between the Americans and the, the French a bit you know it's a kind of cold war between the Americans and the French for control of these regions god forbid we allow Africa to control its own regions um, the French are 
still going to be able to rape resources from various African countries. That hasn't gone away. And I think that we all need to be very aware of that. You know, we need to be honouring the fact that actually uh, this is a huge problem. This is indefinitely a huge problem um, for, for the foreseeable future. The French leaving Niger is a fantastic move in the right direction and I'm so pleased for the people of Niger. I imagine their human rights, their birth rate, their mortality rate, uh, their education rate will, will just go up exponentially as it has in Mali and all other countries that have got rid of these people. But I do feel very concerned for the still French friendly countries that border Niger that will no doubt have to absorb some of the uh, French Foreign Legion. And that's actually what caused this coup in Niger in the first place. We, we, we see from uh, reports now that actually, you know, there were orders given to the military that they were to allow the French Foreign Legion to exit Mali and set up shop in Niger. And it wouldn't just be troops. Again, it would be these, you know, second, fourth, fifth generation French Europeans who have just enjoyed a very cushy life with a few slaves and lots of resources for free, you know. So um, watch this space. Uh, and again, God bless the people of Niger. I'm really happy for you. And my, my heart is with um, all of Africa at this time, particularly those boundary countries.